Hey everybody, it's Tony coming to you from my deck because the lighting inside my house sucks for my um, laptop built-in camera. I'm getting ready to go in the kitchen and try to videotape a recipe for some bison meatballs. And you can find out more at mycamerasucks.com. I'm kidding. I hope you enjoy the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye. Okay, we're ready to start cooking. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to chop up a little bit of onion to go in my meatballs. Because the meatballs are going to be small, I'm going to want the onions chopped up as fine, finely as possible. So, um, and I'm going to just do a little extra step and saute my onions. You guys don't have to do that. Um, I just really don't like the taste of raw onions. So, not only do I use sweet onions when I'm cooking all the time, but I also um, just caramelize them a little bit in a skillet before I put them in anything that's um, like meatloaf or meat. So you want to make sure these um, onions are chopped up really finely. Number one, so they'll cook faster. And number two, because I don't like biting into big chunks of onions in my meatballs or my meatloaf. Or my burgers. I've got a non-stick skillet heating up here. And what I'm going to do is spray it with a little bit of um, coconut oil cooking spray. I think there's a couple of different brands of this in the store. Um, if you don't find the coconut oil cooking spray, just use regular Pam. I'm going to let that heat up for a minute, and then I'm going to add my chopped onions. Like I said, you can totally skip this step if you don't mind uh, slightly cooked or raw onions in your food. This is just something I like to do. So my uh, onions are caramelizing nicely. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of garlic. You want to add the garlic at the end because garlic um, burns easily. So you don't need to really cook it that much. I'm going to cook this for about another 30 seconds and then I'm going to add the onions and the garlic to my meatball. Now while the onions are sautéing, I'm going to start um, seasoning my bison. I'm using ground bison. This is 90% lean, 10% fat for this recipe. I don't tolerate beef well normally, so um, but bison seems to work out a little bit better for me. If you like beef and you don't like bison, just make it with um, ground beef instead of bison. This package here has a pound in it. So what this is going to be is four servings of the meatballs. And just to let you know, one serving of the meatballs is going to end up being about 200 calories. And um, it's going to be really low in fat because I'm not going to use any additional oil to cook it. A couple ingredients I'm going to add besides the onions are the Bragg's liquid aminos. These are, this is a seasoning that I use um, sometimes when I'm on the protocol. I know they're supposed to be good for you. I really probably should know what all they do for you, but I don't. All I know is it tastes a little bit like soy sauce and it has zero calories. The second thing I'm going to use is my special Cajun seasoning. There's a recipe for this that you can put together with probably most of the seasonings that you have on hand in your pantry already. Um, the recipe is on my website, HCG Diet Recipes Made Simple. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit, bit of that on. I'm going to check my onions. Oops, I almost forgot about the garlic. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I buy my garlic and how I keep it fresh until it's ready to use. I don't know if you've been to Costco and you've seen these big gallon jugs of peeled garlic. I know I probably cook more than the average person, but um, even if you're not a professional chef. You can buy this garlic and what I do is I put it in a, in a, a Ziploc bag. I'm using a food saver bag here and I freeze it in small quantities so that when I'm ready to use some I just pour it out and put it in my food processor and chop it up a little bit. I do this because I hate peeling garlic more than anything and I use a lot of garlic in my food. So I'm going to add the cooked onions and garlic. 
to my bison. I'm going to squirt in about a teaspoon of the Bragg's liquid aminos and just mix it up. You wanted to add some extra um, color to this, you could chop up some parsley. In fact, I think I will. I think I've got some parsley in my fridge. Now, while the um, while you weren't watching, aka while the camera was off, um, I added some fresh basil to the meatball mix. I had some growing in the garden, and you can add parsley or you can just leave it out. Now, I remember I told you this package of bison was a pound, and it's going to be four servings of the meatballs. So what I do is just to divide it into four equal piles, more or less, and I know that each one of these piles is going to be a serving. So I'm just going to start to make my meatballs. I'm going to make them fairly small because I want them to cook quickly. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And what we're going to do is pop the meatballs in and cook them for about 15 minutes. Now, because these, this bison is extra lean, you don't want to overcook it. When you overcook extra lean meat, it becomes really dry and tough. So that's about six meatballs per serving. You know what? If you're really short on time and you don't feel like making all these meatballs, guess what? You can make a little bison meatloaf or a bison burger. And that's what I'm going to do with my remaining serv uh, servings of the bison. I'm going to make burgers. So there. I've got a baking pan that I have just lined with some parchment paper. That's just to keep the, the meatballs from sticking and also to make cleanup easier. You don't have to use parchment paper. You can use um, foil or nothing at all. While my meatballs are cooking and my, my bison burgers are browning, I'm going to make my side dish to go along with uh, the meatballs and I'm going to have mashed potatoes. Just kidding. It's creamy whipped cauliflower. So I've got a whole head of cauliflower. This is going to make at least four, probably five different servings, separate servings. So don't be intimidated by cauliflower. Cut it in half. Cut it in quarters. Cut the stem and the leaves off of each quarter. And then just chop the heck out of that bad boy. Cauliflower is not technically on the Dr. Simeon's protocol. But if you're on a protocol that does allow cauliflower, like um, the one I'm on, the Fin Deluxe protocol, or, and I know there's some other protocols that allow cauliflower, you can have this. And if you choose not to eat cauliflower on P2, just save this recipe for phase three. It's perfect. So I've got a pot of boiling water already going. I'm going to toss it in and um, boil it or you could steam it for about five minutes until it's tender. So my cauliflower is finished steaming and I'm going to add it to my favorite thing, my Blendtec blender, because it will make a soup or a cream out of anything, let me tell you. I'm just going to put the cauliflower in there, put about a teaspoon, three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt and pepper, I've already got it mixed up. I've got some low-fat cottage cheese, you can use also no fat. I like the low fat because it's um, lower in carbs and that's what seems to bug me the most. Um, like I said, if you're not on a protocol that allows cottage cheese, mine does, um, save this recipe for phase three. I don't want to mess you up. But I've already got my cottage cheese um, blended up. I don't like the texture of cottage cheese the way it comes, so I just put it in the blender and make it a cream because that's how I'm going to use it in most of my recipes. One more thing that I've got that's a, lot, a little secret ingredient 
for my uh, whipped cauliflower that I've just started adding, and that is um, Lipton Onion Soup Dry Mix. And what it is, is dehydrated onions and a little bit of dehydrated beef broth. So, a serving of this is only 20 calories, um, no fat, and uh, maybe about four carbs. So I'm going to use a teaspoon. And like I said, this is going to be at least four, possibly five or more servings of the cauliflower. I've got some plain old water. I'm just going to add to it to make it easy to blend. I guess about a fourth of a cup to start out with. Um, turn it on. So I think my meatballs are ready. So I've got my creamy whipped cauliflower, aka fake mashed potatoes. My meatballs are ready. What did I say? It was six meatballs per serving. And I am ready to sit down and eat. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. Since I don't eat uh, beef but once a week, I want to make sure that these meatballs and the burgers stay fresh until the next time I want to eat them. So I use a food saver to uh, save my meat. And you could just use a Ziploc freezer bag and just suck out all the air so it'll stay nice and fresh and I can keep it in the freezer. There it is.